get it started. ready for okay. something okay. Mm -hmm. which is unique. Yeah. We had it right by guest now, so we're telling y'all it's 8 o'clock. I get it started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's six o'clock, and I'd like to call the November 4th, 2021 meeting of the Columbia County Planning Commission to order. If you'd stand with us, Commissioner Wilder will lead us in our invocation, or Commissioner Carraway will lead us in the pledge. Y'all would bow with us. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for yet again another beautiful day, this lovely fall weather that we're enjoying. Uh, we're going to ask you to, to please look over us to see guide us. We want to thank you for, for allowing all these folks to come join and participate in this process. Uh, we we want to thank you for all the, the first responders and ask that you look over those, those people that look over us on a day-to-day -day basis. All these things in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. If I could ask you to please silence your cell phones. And we'll go ahead and get the preliminary items out of the way, but we'll go ahead before we, and uh, we'll let everybody uh, come in and be seated before we start the meeting. So, uh, so if you'll bear with us, we'll get this done. Uh, we do have all five commissioners present tonight for a 100% quorum. Gentlemen, you've had an opportunity to read the minutes from our October 21st meeting. If there are no ad additions or amendments, I need a motion for approval. So moved. Do we hear a second? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve the minutes as submitted stands 5-0. Uh, gentlemen, you've also a chance to uh, uh, review the agenda for tonight's meeting. I believe we do have an additional item that we need to add. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd like a motion to add to the agenda item H2B2, temporary use authorization. Okay, and could we have, uh, for the record, um, who's going to present that? Uh, Jennifer. Okay, Jennifer, could you give us a quick rundown of what that is? Just temporary. Okay, so the motion to add has been made. Do I hear a second? Second. Do I, any discussion? All in favor to add the item to the agenda? Okay, that'll uh, pass as 5-0, and that'll go to H2B2. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to clarify that the Planning Commission is a recommending body to the Columbia County Board of Commissioners. The decisions made on rezoning and variance requests tonight will be forwarded to the commissioners for final action on November 16th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in these chambers. If you wish to address the Board of Commissioners at their meeting, please see Ms. Kara Harden and she'll give you a request to speak form. We're less formal in these chambers. If you have something that you'd like to, uh, to present to us uh, in our uh, public hearing or in our public comment section at the end of the meeting, raise your hand. We'll ask you to come up to the microphone, give us your name and home address, and we'd like you to take three to five minutes to give us your position for or against or whatever information you'd like us to have uh, that is uh, not germane to the, uh, to the issue that's being presented if you gave it to us at the end of the meeting. Uh, we do have two particular items tonight, uh, a rezoning at Appling and one on Owens Road that people may get emotional. I want to remind everybody to be ladies and gentlemen, to address each other with respect, to address the commissioners, not the, the gallery. Um, People, people have feelings. We're all we're all here to as residents in Columbia County, trying to express opinions that we believe are best. So again, I will remind you to behave, and if you don't, I will have the offending folks escorted out. And if it uh, gets to the point, I've never had to do this in 14 years, but I will clear the room. So that being said, uh, let's take a minute or two, let folks file in. If you've got an empty chair next to you, please raise your hand so the folks can be seated. And gentlemen, if, uh, if we have ladies standing, I would appreciate it if some of y'all would give up your seat for the ladies as they come in. So with that. Uh, we don't, if they're gone out there, ladies, do we have any more agendas? Okay, we don't. Okay, we do not but they'll be announcing the agenda items and talking through those. We won't be here more than seven or eight hours, so we'll be all right. <laughs> okay. 
this point. And we do have some seats up front here, too, so f feel free. And sir, as you're coming into the public meeting, if I could ask you to remove your hat, please. Thank you very much. Mr. Sterling, are we going to have a capacity issue that we need to address here? I'm not sure I can count. <laughs> What um, might get too many more? We might have to do a head count real quick. Okay. Sure. What's what's the capacity for fire marshal? One eighteen. One eighteen. Why don't we go ahead and start a head count on where we are? I want to allow everybody in that, that wants to come in. We do have some room down front, ladies, so if y'all want to come on down. Commissioner Wilder looks mean, but he's not. Let's see, I think the last time I seen it, all the room is full. Lights it. Okay, how many more can we take? Okay. okay, why don't we go ahead and get six more outside the door? We've got we've got enough chairs. Okay, why don't we why don't we stop with her and we'll go ahead and proceed with the meeting. Jim, we go through a couple items and we can ask those. We can. Um because Appling will come before Owens Road, so maybe we can get a couple of folks to swap. Yeah, that's right. Someone's here for Bob. They can leave, I think. And at the mercy. Two, two was five. And Fanny. Ooh, that'll probably get it. Yeah, we we've, we've got three. Keep moving both of them. <laughs> uh, why don't we go ahead and get? Some 
work. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yep. Going to do those first? Yeah, we'll do the first couple. No, he's talking about uh, I believe Joe Kaplan first. No, 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 no. Follow in the order. All right, yeah, we'll follow the agenda and get them out of the way. Ms. Montgomery, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. Uh, we'll have a sign review for Greenpoint. Yes, sir. This is a review for permanent signage locations and sizes for the Greenpoint planned unit development off Wrightsboro Road and Appling Harlem Roads. Um, they are proposing five community marker signs that are under review with this request. Um, this is the location of the PUD in the, the light blue on the map. And these are the proposed sign locations. So we have four kind of boundary markers, um, north, south, east, and west, and then one central sign um, near the, the roundabout across from the, the existing gas station. Uh, so the, the proposed signs are, are obelisk designs with the Greenpoint logo on them. Um, two of the signs would have wording. The one at Pumpkin Center would have the Greenpoint wording on the, the screening wall, as would the, the southern sign at Greenpoint South. Um, that is the, the residential development behind the school. Um, all of the signs are meet the, the county size requirements, and they're being permitted under allowances for a mixed-use project entrance sign in the case of the, the westernmost sign here and for the other four signs as um, commercial signage on undeveloped commercial property uh, based on the, the zoning under the, the planned unit development. Um, so there are three different sign heights. Um, the largest sign is the center one um, at the, the roundabout. Um, that was 15 feet in height. The two signs on um, Appling Harlem Road are 12 feet in height, and then the two on Wrightsboro are the shorter ones at eight feet in height. Um, again, the, the size, the height, and the sign, size of the signage all meet the, the code requirements, and we do have more detailed location plans that show they meet the, the setback requirements as well. Um, and staff is recommending approval of the signs. Thank you, ma'am. Gentlemen, any questions, staff? Okay, this is not a public hearing, so I'll need a motion to approve uh, as submitted to deny or to table. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve H2A1 sign review for Greenpoint. Do we hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5 0. Ladies, we've got some seats down front. Y'all would like to come on in? Ms. Neal, uh, temporary use authorization, tax map 29, parcel 53 Echo. Yeah, so this is a request for a temporary use authorization at 1680 Swint Road on 6.07 acres, currently zoned RA, residential agricultural. This shows the location of the site. It shows the zoning of the site, completely surrounded by RA zoning as well. And this shows their site plan. They're just proposing to build a house here and a shop here, and they are requesting a 38-foot travel trailer there <coughs> for construction of their home. They have already applied for permits and are expecting it to be done within the year. And staff recommends approval. This also shows the travel trailer, sorry. Thank you. Gentlemen, any questions? Okay, this is not a public hearing. I need a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve temporary use authorization for 1680 Swint Road. Do we hear a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. And we've got our additional item, uh, number H2B2, Ms. Neal. Yes, sir. This is a temporary authorization <coughs> request for 651 Gibbs Road on 1.095 acres, currently zoned R2, single-family residential. This shows the location of the site off Gibbs Road. This shows the zoning of the site. It has some R2 and C2 surrounding it. And this shows the location that they plan to put their travel trailer while they during the construction of their home. Um, they have not applied for permits at this time, um, and they are waiting on the plans that they have to finish getting revised before they submit for the permits. Um, code enforcement does currently have a case open for this property to try to get it cleaned up, and that's part of the, um, the request from the applicants is so they can put the travel trailer there, get it cleaned up while they um, prepare to build the home. Um, staff does recommend approval with condition that on a weekly basis, they provide receipts for cleanup and or disposal of debris and trash on the site to Columbia County Code Enforcement. That concludes staff recommendation. How long has Code Enforcement been attempting to get this cleaned up? I do not have a definite um, time frame on that. Ms. They Rhodes not here. us of the um, no, codes she, and everything today. So it's been a couple of months, according to them. A couple uh, they, of they months? Didn't give us a, yeah, they didn't give us an actual, you know, it's been six weeks or whatever. 
All right. Gentlemen, any questions, staff? In the event that the, the conditions aren't being met, place on this tour, will that affect them? Will they have to stop? That will be a code living in the trailer as well because so that would violating be violating their um, condition for approval. Would be in their their code enforcement's court. And and it, let's say let's say they get a violation, they get written up. We go to magistrate court. What's the timeline? I mean, it could be uh, quite a bit. Depends on what's what all's going on. Caseload is. Yeah. I can't give you an answer on what the actual timeline months. Was. Very and they've been working on this problem for months. Again, yeah. according to them, they haven't given us a total breakdown on it. Um, yes. Okay. Good idea. They're only allowed one more after that, right? So what, what, one more approval? Two, two one more. more. They'd have to come back a year later. Yeah. Approval. Yeah, you, you right. can extend it for a year beyond their, their initial approval. Could I right. make a statement before we ask for a motion? Yes, sir. Please do. Um, code enforcement has not been able to get these people to do anything. And it is a mess. I think we're putting the cart before the horse to make a motion to approve it until we see some sincerity from these property owners to clean the mess up and then bring it back to us. That's just a thought before the motions. So we had a motion to deny based on the condition of the property and ask them to get it cleaned up and then come back to us. Would we need to do that in a form of a motion or just not here? No, it's on it's on the agenda, so we'll need a, an action of some sort, whether that's to approve, deny, or to table. Um, if you do or approve with a different condition, or approve with a different okay. condition, you know, all right, whatever those conditions may be. All right, all right. This is not a public hearing, gentlemen. Uh, I need a motion to approve uh, with the condition or with an additional condition to deny or to uh, table. I make a motion to deny on the condition of the property until something positive <coughs> is done. Do it here a second. Okay. Should 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 the motion to be approved with an additional condition? Because if you deny there's no condition applied. You could you could make the motion in the affirmative. I think it would be cleaner if you made it you know, if there's a motion or consideration to deny it, just outright deny it. Obviously, we've been here. We understand what the, the reasoning for that is. Uh, that can be relayed back to the property owners so that they understand that there needs to be significant improvements to the site prior to reapplication. Because we've dealt with this before. We have. And code enforcement seemed to want to go forward with it, but with us denying it, the property was cleaned up in two weeks, and they'd been after it for months. Correct. The motion to deny, deny has been made. Um, any discussion? All in favor to deny? Motion to deny passes 5 0. All right, Ms. Montgomery, uh, conceptual plan for Hamilton Grove uh, revision tax map 052, parcel 037. Yes, sir. This is a revision to a previously approved conceptual plan for Hamilton Grove, um, located off Hamilton Road. It's currently zoned R2, single-family residential. This shows the location of the property, bounded um, Wrightsboro Road on the north side and Hamilton Road on the south. Um, the zoning was approved back in 2020, um, and this is the area of the site. It is currently undeveloped. Uh, the existing conditions map shows the existing um, tributaries flowing across the property as well as the, the floodplain and wetlands associated with them. Um, the property does have a good bit of slope to it as well. A concept plan for this property was approved in April of this year. Uh, this is that approved plan and the, the important things to note are current, the current access points on the approved plan. There are two of them, one on Wrightsboro, one on Hamilton. Um, and then the internal road layout has multiple cul-de-sacs. The applicants are proposing a revised conceptual plan that would have two entrance points on Hamilton Road. Um, there is an emergency access shown on Wrightsboro Road in that location. Um, based on conversations with DOT, um, Wrightsboro Road is a state road, and it is believed that the emergency-only access would not be approved on the state route. So the, with this revised concept plan, the only entrances would be the, the two on Hamilton Road. 
Um, you can also see with the internal road layout has changed a good bit. Um, there's still one cul-de-sac, well, really two up at the, the north end of the site, but the rest of the road system actually interconnects, um, has a little bit better flow through the site with this layout. Um, the lot count is very similar to what was previously approved. They actually lost about three lots, um, and they still have the, the larger lots fronting Hamilton Road that were the subject of a previous um, change of conditions and variance to allow the, the buffer to be behind these eight lots on Hamilton Road. Um, staff is recommending approval of the revision to the concept plan. Okay, gentlemen, any questions? Staff, this is not a public hearing, so I'll need a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the revised conceptual plan for Hamilton Grove located off Wrightsboro Road. To your second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. Ms. Montgomery, we'll stay with you. Uh, preliminary plat for River Oaks Phase 3. Yes, sir. This is a preliminary plat for Phase 3 of River Oaks located off Hardy McManus Road. Uh, this is the location of the phase near the back of the development. It's currently zoned R2, single-family residential. And this is the concept plan we'll see in a moment. There's been some minor revisions to this basic road layout. Um, you can see it, it's a, a loop road there on the concept plan. It is still part of a loop road. It now has um, this open space in the center of that loop, so some minor modifications, but does not um, change the, the lot count and actually provides additional, density, or additional open space in the development. Um, this section includes 34 single-family lots with a minimum lot size of 10,116 square feet, um, which meets the minimum square footage requirements for the R2 zoning district. Uh, per that zoning district, setbacks are a minimum of 55 feet from the center line and 10 feet from the side and rear property lines. Um, sidewalks and street trees are provided on both sides of the road, and 3.58 acres of open space is provided in this section. Um, you can also see the 50-foot buffer around the perimeter of the site, um, which is also shown on the plans. And staff is recommending approval. Gentlemen, any questions, staff? If this is not a public hearing. I'll need a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the preliminary plat for River Oaks, Section 3. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? To approve is submitted, passes 5 0. We've got two final plats tonight. Ms. Montgomery, final plat for Anderson Farm, Section 2. Yes, sir. This is the final plat for Section 2 of Anderson Farms located off Louisville Road and currently zoned R1 single-family residential. This is the location of the project. This is the second and final phase of Anderson Farms as it's currently zoned. And this section includes 24 lots with a minimum lot size of 1.22 acres and an average lot size of 2.23 acres. Um, this exceeds the required minimum lot size for R1. And setbacks are a minimum of 65 feet from the center line of the road and 10 feet from the side property lines and 25 feet from the rear property lines. Uh, there are additionally buffers around the perimeter of the project um, where those are present on the lots. The setback is 10 feet from the edge of the buffer. Um, these lots do have public water but are, will be served by individual septic systems. Um, sidewalks are not required in this project and there are 9.2 acres of open space that will be dedicated to the HOA. And this is the existing site. And staff is recommending approval. Gentlemen, do you have any questions of staff? Okay. This is not a public hearing. I'll need a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the final plat for Anderson Farms Section 2, located off Louisville Road. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. Ms. Montgomery, we'll stay with you. Final plat for Kalari Section 5, Bravo. Yes, sir. This is the final plat for Section 5B of Kalari, located off Baker Place Road. And this is part of a planned unit development, and you can see the location of this section towards the rear of the project. This section includes eight parcels for uh, future townhouse development that will eventually be subdivided to provide 32 townhouse lots. The remainder of the lots are single-family lots with a minimum lot size of 5,850 square feet and an average lot size of 9,415 square feet. Um, per the PUD zoning, the minimum setbacks are 20 feet from the right-of-way, 5 feet from the side property lines, and 10 feet from the rear property lines. Sidewalks and street trees are provided on both sides of the roads, and 2.75 acres of open space is provided in this section. And this is the existing site. 
and staff is recommending approval. Okay, gentlemen, any questions, staff? Yeah, this is not a public hearing. I'll need a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the final plat for Clary Section 5B. Clear second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? The approved passes 5-0. All right, let's get into our public hearing portion of the evening. Ms. Mystery, uh, Major S-1, file RZ-211101. Yes, so this is a Major S-1 revision for 213 South Old Bel Air Road on 5.71 acres, and the current zoning is S-1 and used as a private school. Here is the location on the west side of South Old Bel Air Road adjacent to Mural Lake Court. This is the S1 zoning. The R2 zoning to the west is Hamptons at Baldwin Lakes. There is some R1 zoning too. And then on the um, other side of South Old Bel Air Road, there's several subdivisions zoned R2. There is an S1 to the south, which was um, approved for a, um, a sport performance and training facility. This is a close up of the aerial where you can see uh, the existing building that was a church originally and now is a school on the existing site. This is the plat of the property. And this is a development plan that's been um, submitted <coughs> with the application. You can see that there's uh, two additional buildings which will be up to 13,000 square foot in, in total. There will be additional classrooms for the preschool to eighth grade um, as the school is um, expanding and getting increasing enrollments. Um, there is a 30 foot setback to the perimeter of the site and most of the, the back part is wooded currently. So the uh, comments from the fire marshal was that the fire access will be required uh, to the buildings and that might shift the buildings over slightly and um, the applicants are aware of that. Um, and these technical issues will be resolved during the plan review process. Um, we did have a couple of emails from surrounding residents at the beginning of this review, and some of them co was commenting on the fence and the buffers. So staff went out on site and looked at the buffers, and the yellow line is where, um, the dashed yellow line right there, is where there will be a condition added for uh, supplementing the buffer. So just a little history on this. In 2005, this was the aerial. This shows that the church was already built, which was built in 1996. The subdivision, um, Baldwin Lakes, didn't exist at, the, at that time. This is the 2013 aerial that shows um, the church, was, which was then used by Evans Christian Academy, and the subdivision, subdivision was just under construction at that time. Here is a survey of the property because there was a question about who the fence belongs to and this does show that it, the fence is on the school property. Here's photographs of the uh, existing site from the site visit. It shows the north um, buffer at the top there which is quite sufficient. This uh, next photograph is the buffer on the south side. You've got the fence along Mural Lake Court. Um, there are trees and shrubs on the neighborhood side um, and we have got conditions to add trees and landscaping on the school property. There is a playground area at the moment with um, chain link fencing and the, the supplemental buffer will only go up to the, the chain link fence. Here is the future development map. It is in the neighborhoods area which does allow schools as one of the uses. And staff is recommending approval for the major revision to S1 for the additional buildings with a condition that along the southwest property line, additional landscaping in the form of trees and shrubs shall be required up to the existing play area located approximately 300 feet from the southwest corner of the property. The tree locations shall be staggered in relation to existing trees on Mural Lake Court. Thank you, ma'am. Gentlemen, any questions of staff? Okay, this is a public hearing. Is the applicant here this evening? Yes, is there anything uh, you'd like to give us, uh, anything in addition to what staff's given us? All right, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is anyone of the like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? 
Seeing none, I will close a public hearing and accept a motion to approve with conditions to deny or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve with conditions file RZ211101 major S1 revision for the expansion. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Approved carries 5 0. Ms. Montgomery, conditional use for massage. Yes, sir. This is a request for conditional use for massage at 4436 Columbia Road. This is the location of the property on the south side of Columbia Road, just east of Bel Air Road. Property is currently zoned P1 professional. It is surrounded to the south and the west by property zoned R2, single family residential, although this property is actually a Georgia Power Station, so it is not in residential use. Um, to the east, the Property is part of a, a larger row of professional offices fronting Columbia Road. This is the arrow of the site showing the existing office buildings and the existing site. Um, the applicant is requesting a conditional use for massage for this property. Um, she is already a licensed massage therapist in the county um, and is operating over off of Cox Road. Um, she is planning to relocate her business to this property where the, she has a little more space um, since her, her business is doing well. Um, and is requesting a conditional use be applied to this location. Um, the applicant originally requested that the conditional use apply only to the suite she was going to occupy, which is suite 204. Um, we did slightly modify that condition to avoid the situation we saw recently on Evans to Locks Road, where when the therapist went to move from one suite to the other, she had to come back through the rezoning process. Um, so we are trying to avoid that, so we did slightly modify that condition to limit massage therapy to being offered only in one suite, but not specifying which one specifically. And in terms of the future development map, this parcel is in the Columbia Road Professional Corridor. Uh, it, the property is already zoned for professional use and is intended to stay in that use, so there, this does meet the intent of the future development map. And staff is recommending approval with the condition that massage is limited to one suite on the property at any given time, um, with this being intended to allow multiple businesses to operate in the single suite. And that concludes the staff recommendation. Okay. Gentlemen, any questions to staff? Okay. This is a public hearing. Is the applicant here? Yes, ma'am. Is there anything additional you'd like to add? All right. Uh, this is a public hearing. I'd like to, uh, to open the floor to anyone that would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve with conditions to deny or to table. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve with conditions file RZ211102, conditional use for massage at 4436 Columbia Road. Do your second. Second. Okay, any discussion? I've got one question. Um, you have one person that's going to lease but then they'll sublease possibly to other operators. Yes, sir. She said that is how her business currently operates on so Cox She'll Road. have the massage operator's license. The other people will not have to have a massage operator license. If they operate as individual businesses, they should okay. all have individual operators. Okay, they all should have it. Okay. Okay. So can you make sure that your, your folks know that if, if you sublease? Okay, great. All right. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Motion passes 5-0. Okay, uh, our first uh, event of the evening is our Appling uh, rezoning. Do we have anybody outside that? Okay, so could I have 10 to 15 volunteers uh, for the Owens Road issue to volunteer to step outside while we hear this one issue? Thank you, I appreciate it. It's gone. Oh. 
other good side. <laughs> Sir, if I could ask you to remove your hat while you're in the, in the uh, open meeting. We got a Jennifer, we got a couple seats down front. Yeah. And that gets that gets everybody in that that wants to come in. All right, so we'll go ahead while y'all are signing. We'll go ahead and start with the staff presentation. Mr. Butler, file RZ two one 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 zero three rezone from RA to C two. Senator Chair, a request for rezoning on eight hundred three Alfred Harlem Road on zero point nine one acres from RA to C two. Currently, it's used for residential use. Shows the location of the property on the east side of Alfred Harlem Road. Again, currently zoned RA, so pretty much everything else around it is also zoned RA. Then you do have some C2 on either side of Appling Harlem or either side of Columbia Road as well. There's aerial view of the property and also the existing site, again, currently in residential use. Also, the plat of the property. Interestingly, this is uh, actually the, pro the plat for this property. There is, we cannot find an actual plat for this existing property. Um, so it's one that we're having to cobble together kind of what the plat would look like. Some respects. This is the concept plan they've given us. Again, with any kind of rezoning request, we're going to ask for a concept plan. Uh, that does not mean they'll actually develop this the way that they're showing it. Um, this is the property in question tonight. They do show these two other properties being involved with a shown convenience store and hotel. So there's kind of two different ways to look at this uh, from a staff standpoint. Um, you know, as part of any kind of rezoning, we have uh, the different factors that we look at uh, when, when it comes down to rezoning property. Uh, one of those is uh, future development map, which I'll get to in a moment. Another one that we can kind of use is what's around the actual property. Uh, if we can go back to the overall zoning map. <clears throat> so one of the arguments is that you can say, well, there's already C2 here, all, you know, all along this, this corridor in the immediate area. So we can use that to kind of glom off of and, and have this be C2, kind of ends the, the line of C2, kind of closes it out. You're probably not going to develop this for C2 for quite a while. Um, so you could use that argument in order to approve this. Uh, the other side of it, there's also Vision 2035. That's the uh, county's comprehensive plan. Um, that is something that's voted on by the commission. Uh, it's formulated by uh, planning staff, consultants, a group of um, appointed um, uh, stakeholders, and also the uh, community as a whole. Uh, so it's one thing that is the, the, com the community's plan for how they want to develop. Uh, this area here, you can see the, the property in question is immediately in the neighborhood's character area. And then you do have a rural neighborhood across the street, and then this area is also a rural corridor. Uh, neighborhood's area, um, it is very much what it says it is. It's supposed to be for residential development. Um, you know, it doesn't really include any commercial development at all. Again, it's for, it's for houses. Um, rural neighborhood, actually one thing too, just kind of clarify between these two options. Uh, this is going to be more dense, basically three units per acre. This is one unit per acre here. The, this is kind of the, the dividing line in this situation is Athlon Harlem Road. Uh, rural neighborhoods, again, just what they say they are, looking at one acre lots, essentially, essentially R1 type development. Uh, doesn't include any commercial development at all. Uh, again, lastly, you have the corridor that goes down after Harlem Road. Uh, that's a rural corridor intended to essentially uh, pr um, preserve the, the rural aesthetic of the area <clears throat> as it turns into commercial development. Also, no uh, commercial mentioned than that. So again, we can use the future development map to you know, have a very clear delineation of saying this does not meet that. Uh, in, South's, in South's opinion, that um, the Vision, 20, Vision 2035, with it being how it is formulated, you know, the kind of the weight that it carries, in our opinion, we're going to go in that direction in this situation and recommend disapproval of the request uh, to C2 for the uh, subject property. And that includes staff recommendation. Gentlemen, do you have any questions staff? 
Okay, before I open the public hearing, uh, I first I'm going to ask the applicant to come forward if they're here tonight to, uh, to add anything they'd like to add if they so desire. Then we'll open up the floor for comments from the general public. And what I'd like to do, how many folks are here for this issue? Would you raise your hands? Okay, so if you all have, have a person that you've designated as a spokesperson for your group, I'd like for them to come first and let them, you know, take the three to five minutes to, to, uh, to state the, the information they'd like to give us. And then I'll call on you individually to come up. I'm going to ask you to not be repetitive. If you have somebody that, that, that says they're not for, for motels in the area, one or two of you all are all we need to hear on that. If you've got traffic, the same thing. If it's a public safety issue, the same thing. Um, so, uh, again, we don't have to have 10 people give us the same information, just stating it with different words. So with that being said, is the applicant here this evening? Applicant is not here this evening. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything you'd like to add to the staff's presentation? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. That being said, is there a spokesperson for the group? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Would you like to come forward and give us your name and home address? Your brave soul coming up first. Um, my name is Lori Jordan, and I reside at 6921 Cottonwood Drive in Appling. And I want to add some points to the email that I already sent to the commissioners on why I'm in opposition of the rezoning. I feel that the proposed hotel gas convenience station are unnecessary considering we have Circle K and the new Dollar General right next door. The proposed rezoning conflicts with the county's own long-range development plan, Vision 2035, Maintaining the Appling Harlem Road is a rural corridor, single family homes, agriculture use, open space, civic use. The intent of this vision plan was to preserve the rural character of this corridor while maintaining traffic flow and safety. What is the justification in having a long range plan if you deviate from it? Current property owners purchase the property zoned agriculture residential. and They have every right to sell their land zoned as it is in that location. Land is still desirable as zoned. As far as hotels, motels, there are many. Some very recently built and remodeled off Bel Air, Wheeler Road, Grovetown, and Thompson exits, which I am sure are not at full capacity. Does the applicant show any proof that the existing hotels are at maximum capacity? Has a study been done to determine if more hotels and lodging are needed in this area? Lodgers staying at the hotel in the proposed location would still have to go to Grovetown or elsewhere for meals, which does not make a lot of sense to me. Building this hotel is the first step to opening the floodgates of Appling Harlem Road, turning into another busy quarter. Will the future of this quarter resemble Lewiston Road? Many Harlem citizens also have concerns for this quarter. I want to thank the commissioners, and I hope you will give these matters considerable thought in your deliberation. In my opinion, District 4 is the county's authentic rural green space, a valuable county asset, attracting many who desire to live in such a setting. Thank you, ma'am. Gentlemen, do you have any questions? Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Okay. Nobody else wants to have anything? To Okay, yes ma'am, please come forward and give us your name and home address. Tower Moore, 1790 Appling Harlem Road, I live across from that house. Okay. All right, and we already have a huge traffic problem. If you're just a, trying to get home in the afternoon, you can't hardly get Grovetown to work. And then now we are backing up onto the interstate. And I know that there's plans to put that bridge in the turning circle. So we, Appling, does not want another Grovetown. The traffic is never had traffic before. And all of a sudden, you can't even say, I live two miles off the interstate. And I'm back way up before I can even get to the interstate. So we just feel like it's a traffic issue, safety issue. Don't feel like we need a motel. 
Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Please come forward. And if I could get you to hold your applause, please. Commissioners, my name is Chris Herman. Uh, Would you I live at state your first name again, please? Chris Herman. Chris Herman. Okay. I live at 6104 Gray Road. My wife and I also own Maggie Jane Snowballs in downtown Appling. And for me, I look at this from a geographic perspective. There's not another hotel this distance from the interstate in the entire CSRA with the exception of downtown Augusta. Downtown, North Augusta. This is almost three miles from the interstate. Every other hotel is within a half mile of the interstate in this entire area. There's not a hotel in Evans. Why should there be one in Appling? That's sort of my thoughts. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, to deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on this issue. First off, I'd like to say that I live on Louisville Road right below there. Our uh, county commissioner for that area, Mr. Galius, who's here tonight because he's concerned, lives real close to there. So we all share the same sentiments that you do because we live there. Now, the other two lots next to this lot in question have already been zoned C2 a long while back. Because of the conditions, um, I'll make a motion to disapprove RZ 21-11-03 because of the 2035 conditions. Do hear a second? Okay. Any discussion? Okay. I think motion good and, and adhering to Division 2035 is, is the right move in this particular circumstance. Gentlemen, any other comments? Okay. All in favor of disapproval? Motion to disapprove carries 5-0. Now you can clap. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if we could, if you all could make room for the folks for Owens Road. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to take a quick break. Y'all can hold it down. I thought there was a whole lot of us. Make it so. I guess. I guess. I guess. Jennifer? He ain't going to do that. I don't think Jennifer will have to count this time. Give me something to do. What? I don't think Jennifer's going to have to count this no. time. No, this is this will do it. The chance of France appearing. I don't. I don't know. The, I don't know the advantage of pushing it. That's why I, I wish we could go on. He's here for his issue and he's out. <laughs> he's here their item, they leave. He's going to get votes right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but I know for y'all. Yeah, sir. That's, that's my work. My work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the approved. I'm saying approved. Yes, friend. They're, they're talking about both sides of the I was already getting to watch it. Yeah, they're going to be super thrilled. I'm going to be All right, we got everybody in that wants to be in. We reconvene at 649. Ms. Montgomery, file RZ21-11-04. Yes, sir. This is a request for rezoning from R2 single family residential and um, PUD planned unit development for two properties off Owens Road. The request is to rezone the properties to PRD planned residential development. This is the location of the two properties on kind of the north side of Owens Road adjacent to Brandon Wild. 
we'll actually see on the zoning map, the larger piece that is zoned PUD is, um, stop it, it is uh, zoned as part of Brandon Wild. Um, the smaller parcel is zoned R2, which is single family residential. This is the aerial of the two properties. They are largely undeveloped with the exception of a, a single house um, that's identified in the narrative as a rental house. <coughs> and these are uh, fo photos of the existing site um, along the Owens Road frontage and the existing driveway. In terms of the existing zoning, the larger property that is part of the Brandon Wild PUD is, was added to the PUD in 2004. Um, this is the revised master plan from a 2009 revision. It allows 76 cottages and 111 independent <coughs> apartments along with the community and conference center roughly on the subject parcel. So to currently there's uh, 187 residential units that are approved on the, the larger parcel that's already part of the Brandon Wild PUD. Um, I do want to be clear if the rezoning is approved, um, it is intended that this development would be entirely separate from Brandon Wild with the, the rezoning, so it would no longer be part of that larger development. <laughs> uh, since this is a request for a planned residential development, the concept plan is being reviewed as part of the rezoning request. Um, they are approved simultaneously. Um, so this is the existing conditions map provided by the applicants. There is an existing pond on the site and basically a, a ridge that bisects the property. You can see this is kind of the, the high point, um, and then the property falls away to both sides of that. Um, we did also have GIS perform a slope analysis on the property, um, so this is the results of that analysis. Um, relatively level topography is cited throughout the narrative that the applicants have provided as justification for the proposed density and the reduced setbacks. Um, so we did run the, the slope analysis to see what kind of came out from that. Um, you can see there is kind of along that ridge that it is fairly level with slopes of less than 5%. Um, however, as you get away from that ridge, the, the property does slope more with some moderate slopes. Um, and as you get down towards the, the edges of the property, you can see as the, that yellow gets darker, that is a, an increasing slope to the site. Um, based on this and the the lot sizes and the, the density proposed by the applicants, um, we are assuming that if this property is developed as proposed, it would be subject to the major site grading ordinances. In terms of the proposal, um, the applicants are proposing 174 single family homes. There would be a single entrance to the project here on Owens Road that would line up with Legion Drive that would require the applicants to install left and right turn lanes on Owens Road. Um, the plan includes a, a public road network that's kind of the, the perimeter roads outlined in the, the darker red, as well as several alleys. Um, in this case, just over 60% of the homes are actually alley accessed, which is a, a fairly high percentage for residential developments in the county. There are two lot types identified with three sets of standards. Um, for the alley loaded lots, there are two standards set for the internal alley loaded lots. Um, these would be the smallest lots in the development, so these would be anything not on a corner that is um, serviced by the alley. They would have a minim minimum width of 42 feet and a minimum lot size just under 3,800 square feet. The corner lots on the alleys would be slightly wider with a minimum of 45 feet and a minimum lot size just over 4,000 square feet. The front loaded lots which are in the, the blue around the perimeter of the site would be the largest lots. They would have a minimum 50 feet of frontage and a minimum lot size of 5,000 square feet. Um, with the PRD code, um, there is a minimum side setback in the PRD code of 10 feet. However, um, with the PRD zoning request, if the applicants can show that the character of the development warrants it, they can request a setback reduction. Um, in this case, the applicants are requesting side setbacks of seven feet throughout the project. Um, there are elements of this plan that could be used to support that that have been used in previous approved PRDs, um, the parks, the alleys, the, the large amount of green space. Um, However, the applicants have chosen to, to emphasize uh, some different um, aspects of the project. Um, as mentioned before, they've been citing the, the relatively level topography, which as we saw is maybe has a, a little more slope than we would think warrants the setback reduction, um, the small size of the homes and the provision of gutters on the houses and review of the final drainage plan by the development team. Um, this last in particular, we don't have a, a great method mechanism in place to enforce as the development moves forward. Um, so the staff is not in favor of using these aspects that the, the applicants have highlighted as the justification for reducing the setbacks. 
Um, mainly this is just because they largely don't really speak to the character of the de development as is required by the PRD code to justify the setbacks. Um, there is a minimum 50 foot buffer provided around the perimeter of the property. Um, since it is a residential project, that buffer is required to remain undisturbed. Um, and the applicants have indicated that the buffer on Owens Road would be 100 feet. There are also multiple park spaces within the site and sidewalks and street trees are required on both sides of the road. Um, the largest park space here is centered around the existing pond and includes uh, a deck and a covered picnic pavilion, a community grill and meeting area, dog park and playground. The applicants have provided examples of the proposed development. So here on the right, you see the proposed deck and pavilion. And they've also provided examples of the proposed homes. Um, as you'll see, these two and on the next slide, most of the examples provided are of, of front-loading homes. Um, as we mentioned, the majority of the houses in this development are proposed to be alley-loaded. So there's a, a bit of a mismatch in looking at how the development will actually look and function between the, the examples provided and the proposed plan. In terms of the future development map, the properties are located in two different character areas. The larger parcel is part of the Evans Town Center Activity Center, and the smaller parcel is part of the in-town neighborhoods character area. Um, both of these areas allow for denser development, including small lot single family um, residential development as is proposed. So in terms of the future development map, the proposal does meet the intent of this map of the, the Vision 2035 plan. However, at this time, the application documents do not meet the standards expected of a PRD. Um, we do expect them to be able to provide that cohesive development plan and show us kind of a, a higher standard of design and higher quality application than we would expect from a, an R2 or a straight rezoning. Um, therefore, the applicants have requested to postpone this item for two weeks in order to revise their application documents and try to meet our, our standards for this type of project. And staff is in support of this request. So the recommendation is to postpone for two weeks. Gentlemen, have any questions to staff? Did they happen to give you like a water plan for that main central waterway? The pond? pond? As far as, are you talking stormwater drainage? Yes. Or, okay. In general. So the, the intention is to enlarge that pond to handle the stormwater runoff from the site. Uh, that's how they, they've explained it in their narrative. There are concerns from the stormwater department that the one pond may not handle all of it. So as the, the engineering proceeded, it's very possible that there would be additional stormwater ponds added that would handle the, the additional runoff from the property. Um, and that would, of course, most likely mean that they, they could lose some lots in that process. Could we go back to the uh, photographs of the, of the homes? Okay, so any idea what square footage these are? Um, the floor plans the applicants provided in the narrative ranged from a uh, little over 900 square feet to about just under 1,800 square feet. Um, so th since these are examples of homes they've built in other communities, I would imagine they're in the same square footage range. So I, I don't really see anything here that looks like 900 square feet. Could we make sure that in their presentation they give us a depiction of what, you know, if this is postponed on, on what a product like that would look like as well? Yeah, we yes, certainly sir. can, and um, I'm sure the applicant's here, and he can probably speak to that a little more. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, any other questions? Okay. This is a public hearing. Is the applicant here? Yes, sir. Please give us your name and home address. Thank you, Chairman Cox. Uh, my name is Jim Trotter. My home address is 3019 Bransford Road in Augusta. I'm here to represent more development out of Charleston looking to develop this new neighborhood off Owens Road. As Danielle pointed out, we've worked closely with the staff over the last several months, really, even before we filed the application. Um, we are requesting that it be continued for two weeks, continue to further revise that application, answer the staff's questions. Um, we also met, or we had a conference call last week with Mr. Elliott from Brandon Wild, the executive director at Brandon Wild, and addressed a number of his concerns, but understand that he may still have some more. He uh, ran in the hallway to his council, and certainly going to communicate with his council following this hearing to try to address whatever concerns Brandon Wild Management may have. But we would request a continuance to further revise the plan. It's two weeks enough. <clears throat> we, we'd certainly have a lot to do. We may need four weeks. 
Would you rather go for four weeks just to be safe? So, so one option that I could throw out there would be to put it out to a long later date, whatever that may be, two, four, six weeks, whatever. Uh, and then obviously if you were able to you know, get that revised in a quicker timeline and uh, wanted to put it on an agenda before then, we could certainly. We don't want to go beyond four weeks because we got. Okay. Aren't we, one, honestly, and, and, and just personally, I'm, I'm having some shoulder surgery on the 16th and, and I, depending on what they do to me, I may or may not be here and I'd like to be here for this one. Okay. So if we could go to that first meeting, I would I would personally appreciate that. We'll go to December second. Yes, sir. I believe it's December second. That's that okay. correct. I would defer that too because I will be out. All right. You're out. Too. Uh, okay. Like to push this. Okay. All right. And, and Mr. Chairman, let me just point out. Yes, sir. I, I understand there's a lot of angst here. Certainly, a lot of opponents here. <laughs> I just want to point out. They may all be for it. You don't know. They might be. Right. We hadn't right. taken a hand to roll call yet. I, I want to point out, like like Danielle said, it's a lower density what's approved out there right now with the Brandon Wild Putt. The Brandon Wild Putt is, allows on that 34-acre track 187 units. We're proposing 174 units on 40 acres. So it is a lower density. I understand it's a lot more density than is out there right now, and we understand that any development on a piece in this, that area that has long since been undeveloped generate a lot of opposition, um, and that's just part of the, that's the nature of it. But we want to point out and stress that it's a, it's a lower density than what's out there now. Having said that, we're certainly happy to listen to concerns of Brandon Wild and address those that we can. Okay. Would you ask them to please give us some examples of the smaller square footage houses? Okay. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, any questions of Mr. Trotter? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, is an advertised public hearing, so we'll open the microphone. If you'd like to make a comment tonight, feel free. We'll also reopen the public hearing. If this happens to be postponed tonight, we'll open the public hearing back up on December 2nd when we've had the final product to see. So there's no guarantee that what you saw tonight is what we'll be dealing with in four weeks. But you're more than welcome to come up tonight and express your opinion. And with that being said, I'll open the floor for anybody that would like to come up and speak either for or against this particular rezoning. Mr. Spears, are you acting as a spokesperson for Brandon Wild? All right. Okay. We'll we'll find out. Okay. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Please give us your name and home address. Uh, Robert Hagler. I'm with Fulcher Law Firm, 3206 Candace Drive. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, I'm here on behalf of Brandon Weil and its residents. And uh, I would like to a petition signed by the residents of uh, while opposing. Okay. If you could give that to Ms. Dealer, Ms. Thank you, sir. Well, I think a little bit of history is probably in order here. <laughs> 1986, I think. Everybody knows. 101 acres on Washington Road and Owens Road, R2, HUD to permit hospital facility. That included this 34 acres, I believe. I'm not sure it included the other five acres. Later revisions evolved into the Brandon Wild retirement community. Then in uh, 2009, for another PUD and this was to include 440 units of nursing room beds, apartments, duplexes and cottages. Uh, then Brandon Wild built it out but they didn't build everything and everything on this 40 acres. Uh, the applicant uh, request for rezoning stated that it was uh, reducing the density from 279 to 174, and that's actually missing. 
uh, there weren't going to be 279 units built on this floor. Not really reducing it. Uh, after they did that, then Brandon Wild built some uh, houses upper part of the property, uh, which I think are called the preserve. They're cottages, cottages, and it's not as dense as the rest of the thing is. And when they sold those properties, they sold it to the residents on the basis that you would have this 112-acre park. It was a National Wildlife Federation uh, certified for wildlife habitat. Then University Hospital eventually sold uh, the Brandon Wild facility to LCS, and we're here where we are, and they want to sell this acres to uh, for development. Um, now the neighborhood is. Did you pull up the neighborhood map? There? Looking here. You want the aerial? To the to the south property, you've got a uh, R2 development that basically has the state lots, one to four acres or one to five acres. And then to the <coughs> north, you've got Brandon Wild, and along the northern line, uh, you've got the cottages. So what they're wanting to do is put a development in to it really doesn't fit the neighborhood. Uh, it's densely packed with houses. Now, if you look at the comprehensive plan that was passed by Columbia County, the 30, 2035 plan, uh, you've got two areas. You've got the, uh, the smaller parcel, which is an in-town neighborhood character area. And the general characteristics for an in-town neighborhood include a high degree of connectivity with a grid street network and sidewalks connecting neighborhoods and commercial uses. This particular development that they want to do has got one road in and one road out, not connecting to anything. So it doesn't meet your comprehensive plan. Then the larger parcel it's in the Evans Activity Center. And on the, the Columbia County Comprehensive Plan, the commercial activity centers are characterized by compact, walkable, high-density development. Future development plans should emphasize connections to the surrounding neighborhood. Well, it doesn't connect to anything. It's not, <clears throat> if you think about it under the comprehensive plan, it doesn't meet with the goals that Columbia County set when it came up with these comprehensive plans because it's a neighborhood all by itself. I like to call it a flagpole neighborhood. Just got one street going into uh, Owens Road. Another thing the plan didn't take into consideration, it said, and the staff picked up on this, that it was basically a flat uh, neighborhood and it didn't require any grading or much grading. Well, if you look at if you look at a uh, topographical map, it's quite steep in areas, it's like a turtle back and it's going to require quite a bit of grain. Uh, they didn't provide for drainage, they didn't say anything about drainage and you've got uh, Brandon Wild on the down slope of it, grade it all out and you make it flat, it's kind of like a tabletop, they didn't do any uh, studies to see whether the ground was permeable and what they were going to do with the water. So you've got 80% of this property going to be dumping uh, water over on the Brandon Wall, then they made no provisions for it. It's turned into uh, what happened years ago with Jones Creek. It's a lawsuit later. But won't that be addressed in plan development? It will. The intent of the uh, PRD, I'm just going to say, the intent of a planned residential development classification is to create a more desirable use of land, more coherent and coordinated development, and a better physical environment than otherwise be possible in a single zoning. I would submit that 
This doesn't do that in any way, shape, or form. And Mr. Hager, I'm going to ask you to wrap it up so we can get okay. some other folks to, to, right. to the microphone, please. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward. Give us your name and home address. And if we could, could limit comments to three to five minutes so, so we can get plenty of folks, we'd, I'd appreciate it. I'm Maxan Edmonds, Oxford. And I live on Owens Road. Well, off of Owens Road, I live 260 Bowler Drive. Evans. Uh, so I'm on the other side of the Brandon White. Um, I have several serious concerns. I have lived in the home that I have now for 46 years. I know that the property behind me always uh, been an issue but may I say this there are other issues I can hardly get out of my neighborhood now because of the traffic on Owens Road it's a danger for, for, for an old woman like I am to out and get uh, on, on Owens Road. This will only compound that issue. Plus, we are now at the other end of Owens Road. We are fortunate enough to have a nice medical complex going in there, which I foresee coming from, from the uh, Martinez area of, of the county. I foresee that they will be using Owens Road so that they can t make a right turn into the medical complex instead of having to go down Bel Air Road and make a left-hand turn, which is almost an impossibility now. So I have the traffic concern, and I have another concern also. When you uh, have a high-density neighborhood like th that we're being talk, that's being talked about today, being proposed, is bound to have a lot of, of, of young families in it because of the, of the price of the homes. I have a security issue because my property back. So I would like to know, in addition to all of the information that these learned uh, architects and real estate agents and so forth, I would like to know what is being done to secure that area? What is being done to get those people out of their, out of their homes onto Owens Road, which is already a busy road? What is being done to secure their safety? There, these are things. These are concerns that I have. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you. We very appreciate much. your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward. Give us your name and home address. My name is Karen Lennox. I'm at 4275 Owens Road, number 536. That's a cottage at the very back that backs up to Bowler Road, come to the very back. We back up to that. This area is off to my left, and it's a wildlife habitat. And they're wiping out totally. There's not going to be any forest at all where there is now. There's open area, a lot of trees, possums, all kinds of wildlife. It would be a shame to just wipe that off. I mean, uh, the plan that they have looks to me like they're going to clear plant some trees. Not going to be any. Thank you, ma'am. That's all. I we appreciate say. it. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak either for or against? Yes, sir. Please come forward. Give us your name and home address. 
Everett Greenwood, 4275 Owens Road, apartment 711. That 711 is located on the most upper portion of the Brenda Wild Preserve Cottage area, which is right next to it, butts up to the proposed development that we're talking about. We made the decision to move into Brandon My wife and I were very concerned about future plans for the property adjacent to this cottage, which borders on 7-Eleven. I was advised that this property was for a future expansion of this. Future development of this property would be consistent and, and complementary to existing cottages in the BW Brandon Wall campus, not degrade the appearance and appeal of living at Brandon Wall. Sir, if I could ask you a question, did you did you move in when University owned the property? I did. Or, or after it had been sold? After it had been sold. Okay. You moved in after the property had been sold? You moved in before, when you when University Understood. owned? Okay. Got it. Before. Okay. 2012, whatever okay. that is. Okay. Just want to make sure. This was a critical consideration for my wife and, and I when we made the decision to move to Brandwell and enjoy our senior years living in a, in a cottage and in Brandon Wild. Brandon Wild is considered, a, for Columbia County, is considered a gem for senior living. Development and use of, the adjacent, of this adjacent property, sh property should be in line with the existing Brandon Wild campus and in the interest of current residents as well as adjacent communities and maintaining the prestige of living in Columbia County. Appropriately, Residential development of the adjacent property should be done with these considerations in mind, as well as those of the surrounding community. Proposed residential development of this adjacent property is contrary to these considerations. It would not be in the best interest of Brandonwell residents, residents of surrounding communities, and most importantly, Columbia. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak either for or against this? Yes, sir. Please come forward. Please give us your name and home address as these are recorded. And uh, if anybody would like a copy of, this, of, uh, of the CD, uh, are y'all burning copies still or they just go online? Okay, you can go online under the Columbia County website and you can listen to the whole proceeding. My name's Deed Costello. I live at 268 Bowler Drive. My property backs up to this development. A um, couple of questions I have. Uh, not being involved in this sort of thing for a good while. Uh, with the number of lots that they have, I'm looking at a guesstimate on my part of 270 cars leaving and coming back in on Owens Road every day. Traffic concerns are high. That's a busy road as it is anyway, even with our neighborhood having three exits. Um, will there be a second entrance into neighborhood. I moved from a neighborhood because there was only one entrance going. You couldn't get out of the neighborhood at certain times because of traffic. Owens Road is going to meet the criteria there. Um, what impact is that going to have on the school system? Increased number of kids. It's a, a young family type of development. They'll have young kids be going to those schools, there'll be school buses going in and out of there, you'll have trash trucks going in and out of there on a continuous basis that is going to put a burden on Owens Road that just got repaved, not hold up with that kind of traffic. Uh, a traffic study would be nice to see if uh, to determine what kind of vehicle uh, traffic we'll have on that. Um, I just got back from Jacksonville, where my son lives. He lives in a uh, development very similar to this. Uh, Longleaf Branch is the name of it. It's much, much larger. One of the things that I noticed that the traffic, uh, nonstop, addition of the houses after about three years in existence, started to go down. Uh, lesser value, lesser upkeep, more transient people coming and going and that sort of thing like that. With the area in Columbia County, I'd hate to see that sort of thing like that develop. I thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward at uh, and speak to something other than traffic? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward and give us your name and home address.
Whitworth. My name is Jerry Whitworth, and I live at Brandon Wild in the Preserve Cottages. <clears throat> I've been in Columbia County since 1974. First came here, we wanted to be in the country, so we built a new house in Martinez. Well, <laughs> you know what happens there. Uh, inappropriate development all the way around our house. So we moved to Evans, live there. Ten years, inappropriate development, so we moved again. By then, we were old people. So in 2009, my husband and I, we w began planning our final resting place. And I'm not talking a cemetery. I'm talking <laughs> a home and a place where we could live and live out our wonderful golden years. We wanted a home that was secure and had lots of trees and lots of green space. And when I say green space, I do not mean a strip of grass and a couple of shrubs. I'm talking forest, just like what's there now. Uh, during our perspective meetings with Brandon Wild too, they pointed out that this 40 acres was going to be future Brandon Wild development when University uh, Health Services owned it. And so we said, oh, that's such a relief because we, every 10 years we get run out of our homes because of inappropriate development. Well, next year is our 10th year at Brandon Wild, and I can't go anywhere. My next move will be heaven. Uh, I assure her that. So I can't leave, so I am very concerned about the appropriate development that goes on around us. You know, we are older people. We are not old folks, but we are older people, and we're very active, and we meticulously plan our final resting earthly home. And to have it ruined by a high-density, inappropriate development like this is that, I mean... University Hospital birthed, envisioned, and created this beautiful campus. It's a legacy that they, I would think, would want to preserve instead of ruin with something like this. So I hope that a lot of thought will go into it. And if you have to develop something there, don't cut down all the trees, don't clear cut it, and build something that is in keeping with the neighborhood that is already there. And respect your elders. <laughs> Al, they're talking about you. I know. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, sir. My name is Lloyd Van Horn, 1 Bowler Lane. Um, I butt up to the pond there on the property and I have some serious concerns with drainage. Um, I don't see in the plan that there's a good consideration for drainage. I also see along the border there that they're saying it's a pretty flat area. If you were to bring and put in color the area budding up to the pond, you would see a pretty good gully going down to a stream. And that stream is currently running at capacity anytime it rains. So um, I think that that's some consideration should be from our pond at Idlewild that's draining and going in the stream through my property, I, I echo the concerns of, uh, that there's some more work to be done. And I also look at all of our land and all of these properties that butt up against the proposed development that they um, are four acres and we're looking out into dark woods right now. So what is the lighting plan? I mean, are we gonna have large street lights and LED lights going up like we're in the middle of Academy Sports or are we gonna have a residential kind of lighting schedule? And I think that that's, a, that's an important part of this process as well, is whether it's going to be up lighting or down lighting, and if we're going to look out the back of our property and look like we just moved into Academy. Okay. So, and the other consideration is that we have some kind of border for security reasons on that pond, because I do have kids, and I'm on, you know, I'm on a pretty good acreage right now, but if I don't have a safe spot for my kids to go out and play in the woods, and I, all of a sudden I'm going to have a barbecue area and people that I don't know butting up against my property. I think it's pretty generous the way this visual is right here, but I'm literally about 10 feet from the pond. So. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. You'd like to come forward? I, I can sympathize. Please give us your name and home address. I'm uh, William Seymour, 
402750 Owens Road. I live downstream of both. Would you, Gary sp you spell and your last name, please? Moy, M O Y E. Okay. Sorry. And I simply wanted to share out my bedroom window is the drainage pond area for this property in Brandon Weil. And the drainage is not full now, but when you put the amount of concrete and impervable surface that would have to be to support these houses, I, and as was said by the previous speaker, it's not flat. It's going to drain, and <laughs> I don't know that my drainage pond is going to keep it off of me, but I'm counting on the county and the drainage pond to prevent that water from coming. And the other thing is the dust and the noise and the sound as that is developed. Uh, at one time, I heard there was a 50-foot uh, boundary between the back side of the drainage pond and where the houses would go in. And that, again, is not very far from my bedroom window. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak that's not going to... There's nothing here for Westlake. <laughs> for Westlake on this. All right, sir. Mahim Jonovic, 3713 Westlake Drive. It's 48 parcel drains in the Reed Creek. I want to make sure that all the existing engineering controls are put into place to eliminate any additional water to Mullins Pond and everything downstream from this development. Second thing is this high density development. You add, average two cars per unit. Pictures in it show what that was going to look like. When you look at some of the other high-density developments in the area, you get a lot of on-street parking. It just looks awful. So my number one concern is that the drainage is correct coming off this site, and number two, the appearance of the parking on such a high-density development. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to something other than traffic, drainage, wildlife? I see Mr. Spears coming. So. So, Mr. Spears, why don't we end with you because we'll open this back up, assuming that uh, that this that this is postponed. Okay, you're walking kind of gingerly tonight. Yeah. Well, it's um, with age comes um, responsibility. You no know, bruises and bumps. <laughs> <laughs> bruises and bumps. And having sat in this room for God knows how many years and. And listening to these, we know you. Would you, for the record, would you give us your name? I'm and home sorry. Address? I should. I should be. I thought everybody knows me. Um, Frank Spears. I jokingly say that Frank Spears. I live live at 4275 Owens Road Cottage or Apartment 407 on the edge of this property. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I sometimes, when I walked into this room, I, I think about the incredible rich history, of what this community is, and I also look at you. I know you're volunteers, you're paid nothing, to, so to speak. I'm really proud that our commissioner, Mr. Skinner, is here. Sir, thank you. I know you're missing some family time tonight, and you're here with your constituents. And for that, we thank you very much, because you obviously care to hear the subject that you... Having said that, I'm not going to invent any ideas. I'm going to tell it to you just like the way I see it, but it's your staff's words. Here we go. Number one, your staff, there are concerns from the stormwater department that a single planned pond may not be sufficient to drain the entire site, particularly with the existing topography, which naturally splits the runoff into two different directions, north and south. Additional ponds may be needed as engineering work proceeds. The overall density and lot count shown is therefore likely to be reduced with engineering. Number two, your staff's words. This surprised me. Developments exceeding 30 dwelling units are going to be required to have two separate and remote access roads unless each dwelling unit is equipped with a fire sprinkler unit. State code. And a residential 
These are 972 square foot tiny homes. Asked in January of 20 at state level? I can't answer that question. I believe. Yeah, 20. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are 972 square foot tiny homes. Number three, at this time, the staff does not support the application as it does not meet the expected standards for a PRD. The intent of the PRD is to create a more coherent and coordinated development that allows a more desirable use of the land and a better physical environment that can be created under a single zoning district. Despite multiple requests by your staff, the applicant has not provided sufficient information or justification for the requested setbacks. Clear examples of the alley loaded roads, the interface with the public roads, the parks, and the required landscaping. Email dated 26th of October. Daniel, Danielle, excuse me. This is from Mr. John D. Cates, Mayabom Realty. We discussed this internally, and rather than try to have a quick fix to the couple, couple of outstanding issues, we'd like to table this for two weeks so we can ensure to get the narrative and character book where it needs to be. We're using Jackson Heights as a guide, and we'll send you this revised book and narrative in the coming days. Thank you. Gentlemen, we've given these folks a lot of rope. Here's my request to you. And I realize your very learned staff has requested that you postpone this matter. We're not going to solve this in two weeks. We're not going to solve it in four weeks. This is a huge decision to be made, affecting so many lives. We've got to do this very carefully. We've got to plan this so carefully because we only have one chance. Now, granted, it has been said, if you want to control what is on a piece of land, you must own it. Well, my wife said, we don't have the three million bucks to buy it, Frank. I got it. Here's my request. I respectfully request that you our planning commission members deny this request for this development to proceed at this point, to postpone this request as this gentleman has asked you to do, come back in a couple of weeks. It's not going to allow us the time to do this right. We're not going to be fully prepared to analyze, to make the changes, because these are very detailed, very comprehensive issues. If you deny it, we're going to give all the parties to sit down six full months to make the right and proper decision. This agreement will then answer so many of the unanswered questions. Then this motion that you make tonight moves to the next body, the Columbia County Commissioners. But you're going to send them a very clear message that you think what they presented, and you've given them ample opportunity to send you this information, they haven't done it. And we don't want to be rushed. We want to think this through. We want to be very careful that we do this right because we're only going to have one chance. This way the landowners, the developers, and all the affected community members have the right and proper time to make a very important decision. So my request to you, let's vote for a denial. Give us the six months, let us all work together. We will find a solution, but don't try to rush us for two weeks, four weeks. There's too many issues here. It's not gonna be fair. And I think they will take that long to get what we need to do it. They've indicated that they haven't provided the information to you. I know I'm a little emotional, but sitting here brings a lot of memory. Thank you. Thanks, sir. With that being said, I will close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, to deny, or to postpone until December 2nd. Commissioner, I make a motion that we disapprove file RZ21-2. 
1104 rezoning for R2 from R2 and PUD to PRD 429 4299 and 4315 Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, gentlemen. Discussion? No discussion? Okay. Um, my one concern. Uh, if we do not allow the applicant four weeks, what are the legal ramifications of that? Well, in terms of your decision tonight, should you... And I know we're just a recommending body. Right. Regardless of... So you take action tonight and put the motion on the table and just for a second say that it is forwarded on to the Board of Commissioners as a disapproval. Okay, this will still go to the commissioners... They will still have an opportunity to take action, or they and themselves could postpone it. So there will be take about a week and a half or two weeks of time between this meeting and the board of commissioners meeting. They they would then themselves have the opportunity to again either approve it, deny it, or to postpone it. So there's the options are all still there ahead of. So the, the opportunity for the for the applicant to revise their plan and work with you while moving toward the decision-making body still remains. Right. Now, the only caveat to that would be is to how much that plan changes, how much that narrative changes may require it to be resubmitted and gone back through this process. But minor changes may be able to move forward as is. That would be something that we'd have to evaluate as we proceed forward to the Board of Commissioners. Typically, we would like it to be seen and as submitted for the Planning Commission, things that, you know, a couple of Scrivener's errors here or there, send it up as as presented to this board. All right, gentlemen, any other comments, questions? Okay, all in favor of disapproval, raise your right hand. Okay, the motion to disapprove carries 5 0. And if you all could hang with us, we've got one more issue that'll go pretty quickly, and we can all get out of here tonight. Uh, let's see who we got. Mr. Butler filed VA two one 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 zero one. This is a drive through at a Taco Bell, so it's what this won't last long. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, might, I might drag out a bit. This is a request for a variant sections uh, nine one forty four eight two and I three use provisions at forty two nine two and forty two seven two Washington Road. Currently zoned C two General Commercial. This is the location of two parcels on the uh, west side of Washington Road. And again, currently zone C2, pretty much everything around is also zone C2. It has some R2 and some PUD close by. And also area view of the site and the plat of the property. And the, the existing site. What we're going to be looking at tonight is the existing drive-through. You can see right now, it, you, you, basically, you basically have to drive into the parking lot of Taco Bell and then stack in, into the parking lot itself so you basically can block the parking lot uh, from being used. Again, with the recent uh, global pandemic, we've seen a uh, increase in folks using drive-throughs and that sort of thing. Um, so it makes sense to have more drive-through room than uh, typical. This shows the site plan here. Um, again, kind of one of the things that you're looking at, uh, the first one, the 9 144 a 2 this is a, a drive-through is a, an accessory use. Uh, and it, it explicitly says it has to be on the same parcel that, it, that, it, it, um, that it, is, it is accessory to. Um, this shows the drive-through going onto the public's property. Um, however, this area here is kind of unused. Uh, we'll see on the next picture. Um, it is basically a dead space um, in the parking lot that used to be a, 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 a full access, um, actually, no, excuse me, a ride-in, ride-out uh, that was there. Um, no longer the case. Uh, so again, there's a kind of a dead space um, in the public's parking lot. The other thing, too, that we're dealing with, if you can go back to the side plan, um, you also have in Evans Town Center, we can't have a drive through that faces a road. Uh, this faces Washington Road here. Uh, so, again, we're taking care of that with the variance. So, again, uh, not really any concerns with this. You know, we're, we're, we're pending, permitting the existing drive through to remain and expansion on the, on the adjacent property makes a lot of sense in this situation. Uh, there is a condition there. Uh, they have to have a recorded easement agreement, change the drive through between these two property owners. Uh, we've actually already received that, uh, it hasn't been uh, recorded yet. Uh, to my knowledge, they were leading the condition in place. Again, fairly simple and straightforward request. Uh, staff recommends approval of condition. Gentlemen, any questions, staff? I have one question. Any any issues relocating the, the lighting fixtures there? Lighting fixtures. 
I saw. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So go back to the site plans. All right. So actually, it's not on this one. They are, again, it's on the site, the current site plan and plan review. I can't remember what they're doing with them. Okay. Uh, but again, they'll be, they'll have, they'll have line pictures there. Okay, I'm not going to have to do any photometric studies or revise no, anything no, there for no. any bleed over. Okay, I didn't think so. Just wanted to ask the question. Uh, gentlemen, no questions. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is the applicant here? Yes, sir. Is there anything you'd like to add? Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone like to uh, speak either for or against this particular variance? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve the conditions to deny or disable. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with condition file VA 21-1101, variances for the drive through at 4292 Washington Road. Do hear a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. All right, uh, we have no text amendments. We have no legal matters. Uh, do we have any commissioner or staff comments? I appreciate the work you all put in. And uh, again, I appreciate uh, the public showing up tonight. I, it really, uh, for the, the work the staff puts in, uh, it, it really is, is nice to see folks that care about the community and come out and speak their mind, whether it's either for something or against something, and know that we can all come out and, and work together to make our community a better place. Uh, do we have any public comments? Seeing none, I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do we hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to adjourn carries 5 0 at 7 41 p.m. Next meeting is December 17th at 6 p.m. in these chambers. Thank you for coming out. Well, I did my part.